Hi, everybody. I'm Reverend Therese Lee, and this is Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Welcome. We are grateful that you are here today. We have been talking about Christ consciousness and the accountability we have to each um, to ourselves and to each other about being on purpose. So today we're going to talk about not taking anything personally. Don't take anything personally. Are you willing? So let's close our outer eyes as we're comfortable and take a moment to breathe as we do in unity. We take a moment to move from the head to the heart space and consciously breathe from the heart and into this moment as we exhale. And we say, living, loving presence, we are grateful for this time together, for the internet that allows us to be wherever we are, whenever we are together. We are grateful. We are grateful for the opening of our minds and our hearts and our ears to be present to the moment, to be willing, and to engage the truth of each of us in this moment, the very beloved of God. And so it is, we pray this in the name, after the nature, and under the authority of the living, loving presence, that is you, and that is me, and so we are. Amen. Don't take anything personally. How many times have we heard this, right? So we start, each of us, as we begin as little kids and grow, 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 right? Um, and we accumulate beliefs, patterns of living that are um, part of who we become based on our family, schools we attend, where we live, you know, all the things that culture and where we are affects the truth of us. It becomes our belief system. And then as we grow older, we begin to perpetuate the belief system. So I'll say right up front that my definition of belief system is BS. I ask you, as we do every week, and we do in unity, to question what it is we're thinking, what it is we're believing, and then to question the question. We're not going to tell you what to think. And we're going to ask you to rethink what it is you are thinking. So each of us everywhere present has a bunch of accumulated uh, or, yeah, accumulated beliefs and representative, again, about um, all of those who have come before us, all of those who have shared our lives up to this point. And as we perpetuate it, then it determines how you and I individually believe. What is right, what is wrong, what is bad, what is good. All those labels that we have, what is acceptable behavior, what is not. How to judge people, how to see them possibly needing something else. So let's let all of that go. Uh, let's get rid of the boxes of right and wrong, good or bad, the labels we use, my husband, Tom, would always say, it is what it is. So we see with eyes of clarity, always asking for that. And what I say to you all every week and, and here or, you know, whenever we're having a meeting is, can we want what we have and then move forward from that point? Right? So as our beliefs, so we're growing up, become facts, at least in our own minds, then we believe them. And that's where Byron Katie would say is the suffering that happens when we start believing what we're thinking. It's kind of like building a box, brick upon brick, and then we choose to live in this box. And most of our energy goes into making sure that we see and fit into the box. So today we are setting ourselves free. No more boxes. No more boxes. 
And I think that, I believe, I do, that we come together as unity on Sunday, right? Because we want to become conscious of our belief system. Because that's what I'm always talking about. We want to remember at least once a week, I hope it's every day, who and whose we are. Who have you come here to be? Who have you come here to believe? I also believe as I'm approaching my 17th year of ministry that each of us is here because we have a call that we hear, that little nudging that comes from within us to come home to the truth of who each of us is. I love this unity stuff. I love it. To come back to this space where we again get to know that we are one with God, that each of us everywhere, whether you're here now or whatever time it is you're listening, we are each of us the begotten of God. So unlike everything I learned as a kid, each of us the begotten of God. What I love about these unity teachings is we get practical tools. We're called practical because it's about how it is we practice every day being the truth of us. So we get to have these tools that help us step out of limited beliefs, of in-the-box thinking that we have created for ourselves and we then project out into society. Everybody breathing? As you join us, please write your name in the box where you're from. If you have a prayer request, a prayer intention, let us know. If you would like to see our e-news, write your email in there and we will send that to you once a week. So how do we do this? How do we not take things personally? Well, we get to up our consciousness. We've talked about this, living from the Christ consciousness within us, acknowledging the divinity as us every day, not just on Sunday, not just when you and I are doing this. We get to up our consciousness. So there's a story about a seven-year-old who has to have his eyes examined. So he goes to an optometrist and the doctor says, hmm, I'm not sure. Um, let's, let's do the test. And the kid's like, I don't really think I need glasses. And the doctor's like, well, all right. So on that chart, you know, the vision chart in front of you, go ahead and read those letters, A P E O T F. The boy couldn't do it. So the doctor asks him to read another line, which is in larger print. F Z B D E. And again, the little boy couldn't do it. The doctor's looking puzzled. He's like, you cannot read those lines? I don't think you need glasses. And the little boy says, no, I can't read the lines because I haven't learned those words yet. You breathing with me? The little boy didn't take it personally that the doctor thought he was a poor reader. He just calmly gave his seven-year-old explanation. I don't know those words yet. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. So don't take things personally. And when we come from that mindset, and, and I'm, I'm talking about it because I'm doing it, right? Right? It can be difficult, right? We've had those experiences. And sometimes it seems like every task that we do might in fact hold this. And yet each time we do it, each time I do this, it it allows, that's the word I'm looking for, it allows for us to have 
tremendous potential for peace in our life. Are you willing? Are you willing? I saw a Peanuts cartoon this week that had you know, Lucy um, looking in awe and wonder at her little puppy, Snoopy. And in the, then in the next frame, she says to Snoopy, there are times when you really bug me. And yet I must admit, Lucy says to Snoopy, there are times when I just feel like giving you a hug. And Snoopy without a breath says, well, that's what I am. I'm huggable and buggable. I know I am huggable and buggable. Are you? When we get to the truth of us, we know this. We allow love. When we love, then we get bugged, and then we're perturbed, and then we're hurt. You know, we can all write the scripts. We deal out our share of this to each other, don't we? So let's go back to center, not taking anything personally. So if you're bugged, remember, oh, I need to change. I need to be huggable. And look within. What is it about the situation, those words, the look on the face, that causes me to think I am separate from you? Therein lies the lesson. We are one with God. We are one with each other. Say it with me. I am one with everyone. I am one with God and breathe and exhale. I think you'll agree it's really easy to be huggable when we know, you know, we're together in this environment, right? Knowing that we're a mirror for each other, that you are always my constant teacher. I am always your constant teacher. We're always huggable when we can remember that, oh, that last nerve that someone's on means I have something to look at within. I do. Thank you for being my teacher. So when we remember that we each live in our own world, I live in my own world, you live in your own world, I have my belief system, my own BS, you have your own belief system. So what's ever going on in your world is about you. Whatever's going on in my world is about me. And I don't know who said it, but someone did. Nothing other people do is because of you. It's because of themselves. This is that part in unity we talk about where we take a breath first. We respond versus reacting. Now, the greater part of that statement is we get to make it personal. Nothing I do is because of other people. It's because of me. So when we own it, nothing you do is because of other people. It's because of you. We know this. We all respond or react to the same situation differently every single day. How do you handle the person with 20 items in the 10 or less item? Well, now if they even have one of those lanes anymore, right? Everything's self-checkout. How are you reacting to the person who cuts you off? Maybe you're responding and give them the international peace sign. Are you breathing with me? Turn it around. Nothing I do is because of other people. And yet then in comes the ego and I get trapped in my own personal importance, thinking everything's about me, right? Well, you do too, right? We all do. So we get caught up in the maximum 
um, expression of selfishness in that sm- in that moment. It's a small s self versus being centered in self. The moment we assume, which we know is a loaded word, right? That what you're saying is about me or what I'm saying is about you, the suffering begins. The suffering begins because you and I get to choose how it is we will respond. When I forget, when you forget who and whose we are, our buttons get pushed, right? And then the reaction might be defensive. The reaction might be offensive. So let's breathe into knowing, wait a minute. Let's not do this. I'm not going to take it personally, even if I hear snark in your voice and move within. Because otherwise we choose to create conflict. They're what's wrong with me. We blame, which is when you take the word apart, be lame. We don't want to be that. We don't want to be that. We make mountains out of mohills. We tell somebody else about the person who's wrong with us, right? The very word war, we are right, W A. So remember that whole phase we all went through several decades ago now, maybe is, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Choose not to take things personally and allow for the happiness to come. Allow to the person to say what they want and always know that nobody's opinion is more important than your own. Take the power back, Therese. Whether it's a compliment, an accolade, criticism, or a curse, a swear, I do not get to take it personally. You don't get to take it personally. So breathe into that. They're words. I know that voice inflections matter and all of that. But again, when you stand in the truth of you, I am the begotten of God. I am one with God. I am one with you, even though you may be speaking at me rather than to me. It allows then for my peace to resonate up and out to you. We don't ignore things. We're not doormats. We're really clear on that. However, when I feel like a button's being pushed, I get to go and look within. I get to go and look within. Remember about the story in Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me get the speck out of your eye while the log is in my own? Scripture says, you hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's. And we breathe. Here we grow again. Three things that help us to um, not take it personally. Just start from the place that whatever the people around us say or do is not about us. It's about them. It's about what they're working on, what's happening in their world. Acknowledge within you that there could be, possibly, fears and insecurities. Our own stuff 
calls us to embrace it, to work through it and to grow yet again. Fears and securities come up in our lives so we can see them and heal them. And third, get over the illusion that we have in any way a fault within us. We are not faulty beings. We are not separate from source. God is, we are, God is, I am. Say it with me. God is, I am. So we get to get ourselves back to the spiritual truth about ourselves. We get to know that we are spiritual beings born of universal love from the very creator that in unity we call God. Whatever happens outside of us, don't take it personally. Write it on a piece of paper. Put it on your fridge. I am not taking things personally. It's an everyday, sometime every moment practice. You'll know. You and I are responsible for our choices. We are accountable to ourselves for the choices. We are not projecting that responsibility onto another for our own actions, nor are we responsible for another's actions or reactions. We get to travel around the world, wherever that means, opening our hearts. We can say, I love you, without fear of being ridiculed, or without fear of being rejected. We can ask for what we need. We can let our yes be yes and our no be no. We get to make choices without self-judgment, embracing the truth of who we are. So take a moment, close your outer eyes as you're comfortable. Intentionally concentrate on moving from your head to your heart space and breathe through your heart right here, right now. We use our breath as a tool to take us ever deeper within where each of us meets the God of our own understanding. Where we embrace the truth of us as the begotten of God. The truth of us that because God is, I am, we are. Say it with me. Because God is, I am, we are. In the silence. We get to choose to follow our heart. We get to choose heaven today. We get to choose peace, love, harmony today. Doesn't it sound wonderful? Bring your attention back to this time and this place and these sacred holy grounds we call Unity, Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island. Thanks for being with us. And as you practice your generosity, we are grateful. Snail Mail, P.O. Box 1392, Bluffton, South Carolina, 29910. Or on our website at www.unityofhiltonhead.org, where you 
practice the generosity button using PayPal or credit card. Thanks for being with us today. Know that as each of us recognizes and honors the truth of us, therein lies our peace. And so it is. Reverend Therese signing off, Unity Spiritual Center, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Many blessings. Namaste.